between, let's say that there are people in one extreme that know a lot of English or into the other extreme that don't know anything about English. But what about the people that are in the middle? Like, I believe that for those people who are in this gray area, it's very unfair that their visas are going to be denied just because they don't uh, manage the, the, the language uh, fluently. You know what I mean? Uh, I think a lot of improvements can be done here in the country while they're studying in the university. To target what was originally a wonderful and an accessible system is like burning down a house because of a few bed bugs. Blocking the post-study work route will perhaps be the decisive factor in discouraging genuine students from following courses here. Many consider the opportunity to gain work placements an important part of their experience before returning home. But the government says its plans are fair and do not close the door to work at all. On graduation, those with a job offer already in hand, earning at least £20,000 a year, will be allowed to take up their positions. The problem of um, some students not being able to stay on after April 2012 because they're never going to be earning the right sort of money, I think is desperately sad. I think it's what I might call collateral damage. The rules are going to suit those people who can move into classic, well-paid graduate jobs on graduate salaries. And those people who say, I'd like to work for an NGO, I'd like to work for a charity, they're paying a more modest salary, they're just not going to be able to do it. I think that's sad, it's going to create a hole, it's going to be some damage. I think the impact's going to be huge in terms of the, the freedom that international students have to stay in the country. Yeah. So under the new regime, international students are going to have to have secured a job before they finish their studies, which is going to be detrimental because a lot of the third sector, um, the non-for-profit sector, actually don't function on that kind of basis. So it's going to be fine for international students going into uh, the kind of the banking finance sector or the law sector where it's very much mapped out and they can apply for internships and jobs way in advance and they know exactly how much they're going to pay and they can get uh, you know, the, the sponsors from their employers. But for the international students that aren't interested in uh, the private sector and might be interested in going for the non-for-profit sector, they're going to have real difficulties because they're going to have to prove that they, they've got a job before um, the visa is secured. Um, so it's really going to restrict the type of jobs that international students can go into. The, these visa changes, um, completely draconian visa changes, are going to affect international students coming here in so many ways. Um, one of what we've heard a lot is that international students just don't feel welcome here anymore. Like, why should they come here if they're going to be massive, stringent English tests? So you know, all these different hoops they're going to have to go through, show how much money they've got in their bank account, all this kind of stuff. Why should they come here in the first place? They're not feeling welcome. Uh, institutions like Universities UK are genuinely worried about this type of thing. That Britain isn't going to be seen as a good place to go to study anymore because of the visa changes. It's just it's punishing international students. It's, it really is just punishment for coming here in the first place. So. Um, and it, I think it will affect numbers coming here. To be honest, I'm not really happy with the um, UK visa system actually. And myself, I've been extending my visa four times, and each time um, um, it costs money actually. Many people like to come to Britain to study, but if visa regulation is to be um, too strict for international students, I don't. I'm not sure whether um, they still want to come here. My sister, um, she like to come here to study, but she said to me that even more um, the visa regulation even more stricter than before, and it costs money. It takes time, and she had to prepare lots of documents, and she rather choose another country. So she's gone to Australia. I think many people might do that. There has been a lot of problems with bug students, students coming here in London, not studying, not studying, and then taking uh, low-class jobs. Even though this is happening, there is only a small percentage of students that are actually doing this. People that are thinking whether to study here or in the States, uh, they will go to the United States so, because they know that they can stay there and they can work there. Especially for my class, for example, we are 40 students. They are telling their friends back home not to come because they, they won't get the chance to stay here. So of course they will miss a lot of students. You know, the measures of the government, I think <clears throat> it's um, generally unfair. I think if a student has good enough grades to um, study at another university, wherever it is in the world, I think they should be, they should be allowed to go there. Most students come here to study and then they go home and, you know, it develops 
that country as well, doesn't it? I think I think it's really unfair for uh, young foreign students who who want to. Uh, come and, and learn it at British institutions and um, take a, a part of British culture and abroad, back abroad. And it's, it's just really unfair to both the institutions and the, the home students who would learn so much from, from students from abroad. Knowing that, that the, the option that I can't stay in Great Britain as long as I probably wanted to, um, it just put a ticking clock attached to taking clock to everything I wanted to do here, which is frustrating. I think like uh, for my batch, we can still apply for a post-study visa. Like, but then we're going to be the last ones who are going to be able to do it. But for anybody um, in the future, say, who wants to come here, they're going to have a bigger, bigger problem to find work, I think, after they finish their course. I think the rule does not make so much sense, definitely. Like, at least people in India, at least my friends, it's such a big advertising and marketing campaign as well to come and study, say, in the UK or the US. So people are still selling it like it's a very uh, profitable thing to do and it's like an investment in education. But once people get to know that it's uh, going to be difficult for them once they get their master's or undergrad degree to stay on here, uh, I'm sure like the number of students who are going to be coming here would rather not come. Countries that are magnets for international students, like the UK, they can have a lot of benefits. Most of the students, that, at least international students that are coming here, are very well prepared people. When you're talking about illegal migration, maybe you, you would think about unskilled workers that are coming to take other jobs, and, and that's different. But right now we're talking about students who are interested in doing a career here, or maybe a postgraduate degree, who are talented and have a lot of, they, they have a lot to bring to, to the UK economy and they're flying from their uh, original countries because the situation back there, at least in my, in, in my case, is not, uh, it's not good, it's not well for me. If I, if I lived in Venezuela and if I, let's say, start my own business in Venezuela, at the end that's more money that's flowing to Venezuela. But I believe that if I do good here, the good is going to flourish here in the UK, not in Venezuela, nor in any other, not in any other place. New figures from the Home Office reveal that the government's drive to cut the numbers of overseas students will cost the country at least £2.4 billion and a further £330 million in lost tuition fees. The legitimate education sector supports all efforts to root out the frauds that continue to cause so much damage to the industry. But targeting students to reduce net migration rates is far more controversial. The government is only interested in attracting the best and the brightest to Britain. But it remains to be seen just how much harm will be done to Britain's economy and to the country's multicultural atmosphere.